What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. My name's Robbie and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to deploy a Go app to Ubuntu. So here's the app we're going to be deploying. It's just a basic note taking app so I can create a note and it saves in a database and then displays right here. And here's the code for that app. So you can see we're uh, you know loading some environment variables, connecting to a database, we're serving static assets and uh, using HTML templating. And just one important thing to show in this code is that right down here, when you look at examples online, they have you just loading uh, the directories like this. And I was running into issues when it came to deployment. So what I did is I just got the current directory with this code right here and just included it in here. So it kind of does the absolute path and that fixed everything for me. So just make note of that and we're gonna get started right now. So I'm gonna be deploying mine to uh, DigitalOcean, but you can do it anywhere. So I'm just going to come here, I'm going to create a new droplet. I'll do Ubuntu basic, I'll just do the cheapest one. I'll choose San Francisco. Hey, so I'm editing the video right now, I just wanted to make a note at this point. So I'm about to generate an SSH key and I'm doing this through Windows Subsystem for Linux. So if you're on Windows, you'll definitely want to download that. If you're on Mac or Linux, it'll just work in the normal terminal with nothing special. So yeah, let's continue. And then uh, down here, you will want to add your SSH key. So if you don't have one yet, you can just open up terminal and you can run SSH-keygen, whoops, like that, and then just enter through it and that'll create an SSH key for you and it saves to uh, .SSH. So if we just ls in that folder, it creates IDRSA, which is your um, private key, and IDRSA.pub, which is your public key. So we can print out the public key with cat id underscore rsa dot pub. And there it is. So you'll do that, copy the code, and then just come here, new SSH key, paste it in, give it a name, and hit add. I've already done that, so I'll just add the ones I already added. And then uh, we're going to do monitoring, and we're going to do IPv6. And then we can leave all this and hit create. And this is going to spin up an Ubuntu box for us, and it'll just take a minute to set up. All right, so it just finished, and now we're gonna connect as the root account. So you can just copy the IP address right here, and then go to your terminal and type ssh root at, and then paste in the IP address, and now we're connected to root. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is just update everything. So you can run apt get update, and this is gonna update all the package lists. And then once you do that, we can upgrade all our packages with apt get upgrade. That's going to update everything that's installed, hit yes, and there we go, it'll just take a second. And then once you get to this screen, you can just hit tab, and then OK, just get past it. And we're done. So we got um, all our packages upgraded, and the next thing we're going to do is create a user for ourselves. So we can go add user uh, Robbie, or whatever you want to call it, and then give it a password, and you can skip through all the name stuff. And then uh, we're going to add that user, we're going to make it a super user. So we can do that with add user Robbie sudo. And that'll add it to the sudo group. And uh, now we're going to add our SSH key to this user so we can log in as it. So I'm going to go back to uh, my desktop and I'm going to get that key again, which was uh, cat id rsa.pub. So let me copy that key once more. And then I'm going to log back in as a root. And I'm going to go to that user we created, their home folder, which is slash home slash the name of the user. In here, I'm going to make a directory called .ssh. And in that folder, I'm going to make a file with nano authorized underscore keys. And this is a special file that you put SSH keys in. So nano is going to open up this little editor. I'm going to paste in Oh my God, it didn't copy. I gotta go back and, okay, there it goes. Paste in that key and then uh, it's command X to exit and then hit yes to save and then enter. And uh, that looks good. So now we can exit out of root and we should be able to log in with uh, Robbie at our IP address now. So let's try that. And I'm connected as Robbie now. So next up we have to, uh, we're just gonna enable the firewall. So you can go sudo, <laughs> you can go sudo, <laughs> I can't talk. You can go sudo ufw app list, 
and just enter your password. And these are the available applications. And then we can go sudo ufw allow, and we wanna allow open SSH. And that's gonna allow um, us to connect with SSH through the firewall. And then we can enable it with sudo ufw, what is it, uh, enable? That'll enable it, hit yes. And then we can check the status of it with sudo ufw status and it says, hey, it's active and that's what's allowed through. So that looks good. And uh, let's see, what do we gotta do next? We gotta install Golang. So let's go to golang.com or golang.dev or whatever it's called, go.dev. We can go here, let's go to download and let's just copy the link for the Linux version. So I'll go copy link address and then in our terminal, let's just CD to the temp folder. And this is just a special folder that gets cleared out whenever you uh, restart the system. And we're gonna download the go uh, file we just copied. So wget and then paste the link. That's gonna download it. And now we gotta unzip it with tar-xvf and then the file name. That's gonna extract everything. And then we wanna move it to our user slash local folder. So sudo move uh, slash usr slash local. And we wanna move the go folder. And I did that backwards. Go should go first, and then the, sec the second argument is the path. That's gonna move it. And now uh, it should be pretty much installed. We just have to add it to our user's path. So let's go inside of our um, profile file. Go to the bottom. And I always forget the line we have to add, so I'm gonna actually go to the website and let's find it. Get started, um, install, Linux. It's this line right here that we have to add. So I'm gonna add that to my bash profile file. And I'll go uh, command X, yes, enter. And then we'll reload our configuration with source uh, profile. And now if I type go version, uh, you can see it's installed. So now I'm gonna just go to my home folder. I'm gonna make a new folder called go. And then I'll CD inside that folder. And uh, I'm gonna create three more folders. So we have the source, uh, PKG, and bin folders. That looks good. So we got um, Golang installed, and next up we're gonna install Postgres. So that one's easy, I'm just gonna copy the command. We can do it with uh, sudo apt-get install PostgreSQL and PostgreSQL contrib, hit enter. That will install it, just hit yes, and it'll just take a second. And then when you get here, just go tab, and then okay. And now Postgres is installed, and to access it, we have to create a session with the Postgres uh, user. So to do that, you can go sudo um, dash i dash u Postgres. And now you can see we're on the Postgres user, and we can access PSQL from that. But the first thing we want to do is create a user that our uh, app can connect with. So to do that, you can go... Uh, create user dash dash interactive, oh, just like that, and you can create a user. So I'll call my user, I'll just call him Robbie, and then it's not gonna be a super user, and uh, it's not gonna be allowed to create databases or create roles, and that created the user. And now let's create a database for our app, so I'll just go create DB notes, just like that. And now we have to add that user to the notes database. And to do that, we're gonna enter PSQL. And from here, uh, I'm gonna copy the commands. But first we're gonna add a password to that user. So let's alter user and the username I did was Robbie. With password, I'm just gonna do RK, hit enter, and that'll add a password. And then we're gonna add that user to the database. And to do that, it's grant all privileges on database notes to, and my username is Robbie. So there we go, and then we can quit with slash Q. And there we go, let's get out of this Postgres user now with exit, and that all looks good. So next up, we gotta copy our code from our computer over to our virtual uh, private thing. So to do that, I'm gonna exit to get back to my actual computer. I'm gonna CD to uh, the folder of the project. So mine's in go, src, github, Robbie, uh, 
here's my project directory and it's um it's in the notes folder but we're going to copy that whole folder so to do that we can use um a thing called rsync so it's just rsync dash a to make it recursive i want to copy the notes folder and make sure to delete that trailing slash and then let's see we have to tell it where we want it to go so i want to use robbie at and then our ip address let me grab that So Robbie at the IP and then a colon and the location. So I want mine in slash home slash Robbie slash go slash source. And then we're going to add a little bit of additional configuration. I just want to exclude our um, .env file since we don't want that in production. So exclude and then what's the syntax .env. All right, I have to butt in here one more time. My webcam is covering part of the command, but it's going to be dash dash exclude space .env. I'm going to hit enter and that's going to copy all the files from our local computer over to our Ubuntu. So it's just going to take a second. There we go, it finished. So I'm going to connect to my Ubuntu again. And now if I go inside my go folder slash source and hit ls, you can see it uploaded our notes directory. I'm going to cd into that directory and I'm just going to build it for this system with go build. And that's going to create a new executable, but first it has to download all the packages it uses. All right, so this took a good minute for it to work, but it did build. And now we got a special version of our notes app built for the specific system that we're on. So we can run our app, which is dot slash notes. And I get an error and be, we're getting that error because in my code, if we go to um, my load environment variables function, it says, hey, if the go env is not equal to production, try to load the environment variables, which we didn't even copy over that folder. So we'll fix that in just a second. But uh, yeah, to basically run our app, we're gonna use a systemd service, which is just a cool little thing to run stuff in the background. So we're gonna create a new service and the command is, uh, the command is sudo nano, and then we're gonna create the file in here and just name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call my notes.service. And then uh, I gotta enter my password and it takes me to that file. And I'll put this snippet in the description, but uh, it looks like this. So we give it a description and then this stuff is just kind of boilerplate. And right here we give it the command to start our app. So we placed our app in slash home, slash Robbie, slash go, slash uh, source, slash notes, and then the executable is notes. And uh, that's cool. And we can add environment variables in here. So if we go up here, let's go environment is equal to, and then we can add our environment variables. So I'm gonna do go env is equal to production. And then let's create another one. And there's a special one for gin called gin mode. And uh, I'm gonna set that equal to release. And then we gotta do one for the port. So environment is equal to port. I'm gonna run mine on port 3000. And then environment, the last one I have in my app is the DB URL. It should be all caps. So let me copy that from my local file. Let's see what I got. Um, right here, I'll just copy it and adjust it. Um, paste that in and uh, let's adjust it for this system. So it's still on localhost. My user was Robbie and I did the password RK. At localhost, that's the correct port. And then it's the slash notes database. So that looks good. So it's a uh, command X hit save and uh, that created the service and now we can run it with sudo service notes and let's go start. And that just started the service and we can check the status by doing this and we can see it's active and running. So our app is running and uh, yeah, now we just got to install Nginx and point it um, at that port. So to install Nginx, it's just uh, sudo apt get install Nginx or Nginx, however you say it. Don't call me out on that. Hit yes, it's gonna install it. When you get here, you can just hit tab and then okay. And now we got Nginx installed. So uh, we're gonna allow it on our firewall. So let's run sudo ufw app list. And the one we wanna add is Nginx full or nginx full. So let's go sudo ufw allow 
floats and it's nginx full. So now it's allowed and we just got to reload UFW with sudo UFW reload. And let's check the status once more. And we can see it's allowing nginx now. All right, so next up we got to configure um, nginx. So let's go to our folder, it's cd slash etc slash nginx slash uh, sites available. And uh, let's see what we got. We just have the default one right now. We're gonna create a new one for our notes app. So let's go sudo nano and then name the file. I'll just call my notes. And then in here, I'll paste the snippet in the description, but uh, it just looks like this, where you would put the domain name right here. And then we're gonna forward it from localhost 3000, which is the port that our app is running on. And then I'm not gonna connect the domain to mine, I'm just gonna have it connect to the IP, so I'm gonna change mine. But if you're doing a domain, you'll just leave it like this and do like, uh, Robbie.com, www.robbie.com. Since I'm just going to the IP, mine's just going to be listen on port 80 and whatever this bottom one is. So let's hit uh, Command X, yes, save. And now we got to link that to the sites enabled directory. And to do that, it is this command. I'm just going to copy it. So sudo uh, ln s and then the file path. And mine is just uh, notes and we want to link it to the sites enabled directory and I'll do the same file name. So now if we go to the sites enabled directory, do ls, we can see we have that notes one that we just created and I'm actually going to de uh, delete the default one. So remove default uh, and it's got to be sudo. Okay, there we go. And now we just got to reload nginx and it's sudo nginx s reload. And now just restarted it. And I think that's it, our app should be running. So let's try it out. Um, let's just copy the IP address or your domain name. Let's paste it in and I get to my note taking app. I can create notes and it's saving to the database and everything's working good. So I hope this video uh, helped and uh, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, let me know you're there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, bye.